All right, I'm recording this video to try to clear up some confusion about part one on this virtual lab, uh, the second virtual lab called Temperature and the Solubility of Salts. All right, in part one, the goal is to determine the dissolution enthalpy. And we need to remember our basic concepts from the calorimetry lab in order to understand how we're going to do this. I have reproduced most of the rows in the data table that you're supposed to have for part one, but I've added a couple things as well here that I think should hopefully help everybody understand how to do this. Um, so first of all, let's recognize that in part one, the first substance they want you to use is copper sulfate. And we also want to recognize that for this experiment, we want to make sure that we add enough solid so that the solution is going to become saturated, essentially, uh, which means we want to add more than the amount of solid that is actually going to fit in 100 milliliters of the solution. So I went ahead and looked up the theoretical solubility at 25 degrees Celsius for copper sulfate and saw that you're supposed to be able to fit 20.3 grams of copper sulfate in 100 milliliters. Um, so this means that when I go to add my copper sulfate to my 100 milliliters of water, like the procedure tells you to do, I'm going to make sure to add more than 20.3 grams because I want to make sure that I'm saturating the solution, which means, again, I'm putting as much solid into the solution as can go at 25 degrees Celsius. Um, when we do this, we're going to see a change in temperature in the solution based off of the energy that's either required for this solid to dissolve or that's released when this solid is dissolved. Now, if the solid requires energy, which means its enthalpy is uh, endothermic, it's positive, then that means that the temperature should go down of the solution because we're gonna pull energy from the water that surrounds the solid in order to get it to dissolve. If the dissolving of the solid is exothermic and releases energy, then we would expect to see the temperature go up to increase. And that would be because the dissolving of the solid is actually releasing energy into the water that surrounds the solid. So those are things to watch out for when we do this experiment. Now, to set this up, um, I'm going to point out here that it, when you're on the solutions tab for the stock room, if you go all the way to the bottom, there's already a 100 milliliter uh, flask, like a, a flask that's filled with 100 milliliters of water so that you don't have to measure out 100 milliliters of water um, for this first part. Uh, once I grab my 100 milliliters of water, uh, I'm going to also grab the solid that I want to use. So for this, I'm doing copper sulfate. And when I drag this copper sulfate onto the flask, it's going to ask me how much I want to add. And so again, I'm coming over here to my theoretical solubility, um, and I looked this up at 25 degrees Celsius because you'll notice the temperature is starting here at 25 degrees Celsius, um, which means I can actually put this in for my starting temperature, right? 25 degrees Celsius is where my initial temperature will be. I can also go ahead and put in the fact that I'm using 100 milliliters of water. So I'll do that here. And um, yeah, I'm gonna add my solid. So again, I wanna add enough solids so that I'm saturating the solution, which means I need to put more than 20.3 grams in at 25 degrees Celsius if I'm using 100 milliliter volume. So the mass I'm gonna put in here, I'm gonna put in 30 grams, just because that's well over 20.3 grams. And I'm not gonna click pour just yet because I wanna point out what we're gonna pay attention to here. Um, first of all, let me note that for later parts of this lab, important to pay attention to how many grams are in the stock bottle that you acquire because you can run out if you redo the experiment with the same bottle. Um, you can always get a fresh bottle, though, which will be filled up with, you know, a larger mass. Um, so let's just note here that it's going to be easy to pour 30 grams out of this bottle because the bottle currently contains 191 grams. Um, I'm also noting here that my starting temperature is 25, as we as we noted before. Now, when I go to pour this in, I'm going to see an immediate change in the temperature, and it's going to show me just below 
this, uh, or, or sorry, just below this, it's going to change and show me the information for the solution. And one of the bits of information it's going to include there is the amount of copper sulfate that is not dissolved in the solution. So I'm going to click this so you guys can kind of see what's going to happen over here on this screen. So I want you to watch over here as I click pour. And when I do that, do you see how we've jumped to like 9.5 grams? And also notice that the temperature jumped down to like 17 degrees Celsius. Those initial changes are what we're recording for part one. The values are changing right now because the temperature after having dropped for this solution is now gradually heating back up again as it comes back to equilibrium with the room temperature, which would be 25 degrees Celsius in this virtual experiment. As it warms back up, it's also dissolving more of the solid, but neither of these two pieces of information are what we need for the uh, first part of this experiment. We're not concerned right now with the fact that the mass that's being shown here is, is decreasing. We're not concerned with the fact that the temperature right now is increasing. All we wanna know is what these two values were right after we added the 30 grams to the solution. Now, I was not paying enough attention when we did that to actually record values, and you may not be able to watch both values at the same time. So just do this as many times as you need to to get what those values are. So I'm just going to repeat this to demonstrate this. Um, you'll notice as long as I have the flask selected, it'll continue to show me all this information. But if I go back in here and grab another 100 milliliter flask, all right, and I'm going to drag this. No, notice that my mass has now decreased to 161 in the stock bottle because I already used 30 grams of this. But I'm going to go ahead and drag it over here again. And I'm going to add another 30 grams. And this time, let's pay close attention to what the temperature changes to right after I add this, right? So again, we're starting at 25. Let's pay attention to how it changes. So if I click pour, it looked like 16.7 maybe or 16.5 maybe. <laughs> it's really hard to see because it changes so quickly. I'm gonna put 16.5 degrees down first here and I'm gonna just do it again just to feel more comfortable about whatever that value is. All right, you can do this as many times as you want to make sure that you get the right value. So I'm gonna put another 100 milli flask here. I'm gonna drag this again. My amount has decreased because I already used 30 grams of this, but I'm gonna put another 30 grams in I'm going to just do this one more time. I'm going to pay attention to the temperature here. So if I pour, oh, it almost looks like 16.4 maybe is maybe what I'm going to change it to. Okay, so it looks like 16.4. So notice our temperature dropped, right, from 25 to 16.4. So for my change in temperature here, I'm going to take my final temperature, which is the 16.4, minus my initial temperature, and you'll see that that's getting me negative 8.6 as the change in temperature when I add that solid. Okay, that takes care of the change in temperature part. I still need to figure out how much of the solid actually dissolved. And again, for this, I want to pay attention to this number. This number right here is showing us how much is undissolved. So you'll notice this is decreasing as we sit here because the temperature of the solution is heating back up. And as it heats back up, more of this um, solid is able to dissolve. But we're not interested in that part right now. All we're interested in is how much dissolves in that instant right after we add it. So again, I'm going to grab another 100 milliliter flask. I'm going to add another 30 grams. And I'm going to pay close attention now. There's a value that's going to pop up here that's going to say copper sulfate solid. I'm going to pay close attention to the, what the mass is right after I add this. So here we go. 9.6 maybe is what I think I saw there for the mass. So um, let me do it one more time just to check to make sure that that makes sense, that we got about 9.6. So I'm going to do another flask of water. And again... I'm going to add 30 grams of this and I'm going to hit pour. And as soon as I hit pour, I want to watch for what that mass is over here. Yeah, looks like 9.6 seems like a reasonable amount here for the grams. Okay, so for the mass of solid that actually dissolved, right, for this, I started by putting 30 grams into the solution 
And in an instant, a bunch of it dissolved and I was left with 9.6 grams that were undissolved, right? So 30 grams is what I entered here that I poured in. 9.6 grams was the amount that popped up right after I added it as the amount that was undissolved. So that means 30 minus 9.6 grams are what have actually dissolved at that point. So if I do 30 minus 9.6, I'm seeing that 20.4 grams of the solid are basically what dissolved in that instant right after I added it. Now, something I added in here is the moles of solid dissolved because down here when we calculate the molar enthalpy, we're going to need to divide by the number of moles of solid that actually dissolved. And to get this, we are basically just going to divide the mass of solid by the molar mass of copper sulfate. And if you look up the molar mass of copper sulfate, it's 159.609 grams. So if I divide the 20.4 grams by 159.609 grams, that gets me my number of moles now of the solid that dissolved. For the mass of the solution, I'm going to add together the volume of the water in grams, basically, right? So if, I, if this is water, we know uh, it's got a density of about one gram per milliliter. So if I have 100 milliliters of water, that means I have 100 grams of water. And to that, I added 20.4 grams of solid, right? So I'm going to take 20 point, I'm going to basically add to this whatever my mass of solid was that dissolved. All right, so that gets me my total mass of the solution. Now, everything from solution temperature upwards here, I would consider to be your measured experimental values. And then everything below this is kind of like your calculated values. So notice mass of solution was included here because we're gonna use that in the calculations, but this is just the same value as we had up top here. So you can just put the same number in for both those instances where mass of solution pops up. Now for the heat, this should be the heat that's lost by the solution. And so that's coming from the Q equals M times C times delta T. Well, our mass is going to be our mass of our solution. Our specific heat, we're told in the procedure to use the specific heat of water. So that's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. So I'm going to multiply by that. And then our change in temperature is our delta T that we calculated. So I'm going to select that cell and multiply it by that value. And so if I multiply all those together, you notice we're getting a negative 4,332 joules that are being absorbed basically by the solid in order to dissolve in solution. So this is the heat that the solution, that the water basically is losing, and it's the heat that the reaction, which is the dissolving of the solid, that's what it's absorbing. So when we go to calculate our molar enthalpy of dissolution, we have to remember that if the heat that's lost by the solution represents the heat that's gained by the reaction, then we have to flip the sign of this heat value, right? So we're multiplying it by a negative, basically, in order to turn it into a positive. And then that would represent the amount of heat that was absorbed, basically, by this specific amount of solid that we dissolved, but we want to know what it is per mole of the solid that dissolved. So I'm going to divide this by the number of moles of solid that we added to the solution, or not that we added, that we dissolved in the solution. Because remember, we added more solid than actually dissolved, right? So that's one of the things that's a little confusing about this experiment. All right, so if I divide those two um, and do that sign flip, you'll notice I'm getting 33,895 joules per mole as the molar enthalpy of the dissolution. And theoretical values for these enthalpies can be a little bit difficult to look up, but I think I found a value for uh, copper sulfate that was around 60 kilojoules per mole. And so you'll notice here, this is, you know, a little off basically for the experiment, or maybe the value I found is just a little off, but it's on right, the, the correct order of magnitude essentially, right? Notice here that 33 or 39,000 joules is about uh, 39 kilojoules per mole. And so usually as long as we're on the same order of magnitude, then that's a fairly, um, fairly uh, good experiment. 
All right, so I hope that clears up a little bit of confusion about how you're supposed to go through part one. Uh, part two and part three of this experiment, the procedure is a little bit easier to follow with the way it's written, but please do reach out to me if you have questions. Um, but I hope that this was helpful. Uh, you will have to repeat these steps that I just did for two other solids, but otherwise the way I did it is the way you wanna do it for the other solids as well.